yes swati i swati jain national joint secretary spsr on behalf of spsr welcome you all to attend a national webinar on the topic nanotechnology and medical science challenges ahead let me express my gratitude to the notable professor dr shashi alo for giving me the opportunity to transact a webinar on an intriguing topic today welcome dr shashi i would also like to welcome our illustrious and ingenious speaker dr pradeep k shrivastav scientist former deputy director senior principal scientist ex medicinal and process chemistry division csir central drug research institute under ministry of science and technology government of india lucknow uttar pradesh spsr feels privileged to have got an opportunity to share a part of your extensive knowledge today sir i heartily welcome proficient speaker dr abhishek mathur scientist consultant and techno commercial expert at agri biotech industry nagpur today he will be moderating the webinar along with me i also welcome the entire team of spsr secretary spsr mrs monica sabarwal and all other dignitaries of spsr who are diligently working to strengthen the foundation of spsr and right now attending this significant webinar since this webinar is organized by spsr i would like to explicate its purpose society of pharmaceutical sciences and research is an educational non profit organization it is committed to encourage the study and practice of pharmacy education and research the mission of spsr is to promote pharmaceutical sciences in all aspects our vision is to promote and advance the science of pharmacy and its applications in india we look forward to promoting and facilitating the acquisition dissemination and exchange of pharmacy knowledge and information about the practice of pharmacy and pharmaceutical services now i request dr shashi alok to kindly take the lead over to you dr shashi thank you mrs swati jain a very good evening to all myself dr shashi alok president spsr on the behalf of society of pharmaceutical sciences and research i welcome honorable speaker dr pradeep k srivastava sir former deputy director medicinal and process chemistry division csr csir lucknow i also welcome to mrs monica sabarwal secretary spsr today's webinar moderator mrs swati jain joint secretary spsr dr abhishek mathur scientist consultant and techno commercial expert at the biotech industry nagpur office bearer of spsr and all the virtual national and international participants who are presented here in this spsr national webinar so we are spsr today going to organize a national webinar on nanotechnology and medical science challenges ahead as we know that nanotechnology provide an appropriate potential in engineering of material at at present it the vastly growing and developing scientific technology it is defined as the study of controlling manipulating and creating system based on their atomic or molecular specification the application of nanotechnology is the screening diagnosis and treatment of disease are collectively referred to as nanomedicine it is an emerging field that has the potential to reform individual and the population uh, population based health in the 21st century while clinical and medicinal target held at the individual level the mission of public health is to promote protect and preserve health for the group of population to maximize the benefit and minimize potential harms for the greatest number of people it is essential to investigate and explore the potential application of impact of nanomedicine through the lens of public health as the scope of nanotechnology application in medicine evolves it is important to concurrently recognize and advance contribution useful to to public health also nanotechnology is a very rapidly growing field still the product availability is far away from reach because the various hurdles at different stages of development the various of our growth if overcome can bring about innovative changes in the field of healthcare and medicine so today we have with very renowned speaker for this enlightening talk i again uh, welcome to honorable speaker dr pradeep k sivasa sir former deputy director csr csir lucknow and thank you sir for accepting our invitation for this national webinar now i would like to request to mrs swati jain kindly introduce today's eminent speaker over to mrs swati jain Thank you so much, Dr. Shashi. I now read out Sir's brief profile. Dr. Pradeep K. Shrivastav, fondly known as Father of Scientunes and Scientunics, is a scientist by profession. 
He is former deputy director, senior principal scientist in the medicinal and Pro process chemistry division of CSIR, Central Drug Research Institute, Lucknow. He did his MSc in organic chemistry and PhD work from Kanpur University, has got an expertise of more than 36 years of R&D work in the area of synthetic and natural product chemistry. He worked towards the technology development of various drugs and drug intermediates, and latest being the technology development to produce a drug for brain stroke from turmeric. He is the first person in the world to start a novel concept called Scintoons, a new class of cartoons that are based on science. He is the father of Scintonics, a new branch of science communication. He has delivered more than 1350 invited lectures so far in India, Nepal, Bhutan, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Turkey, China, Portugal, Germany, Sweden, Spain, France, Ukraine, Australia, South Africa, Brazil, USA, and Caribbean countries, covering more than 31 different topics to school children, school teachers, scientists, researchers, medical doctors, lecturers, professors, army, air force, social club members like Rotary Club, Lion Club, JC's Club, railway officers, bank officers, government officers, groundwater experts, science journalists, media persons, computer professionals, prisoners, IAS, IPS, IFS, IRTS. He made India the world leader as he coined for the first time in the world the terms Scientoons and later a new science called Scientonics, Radio Scientoons, Puppet Scientoons, Postcard Scientoons, Avdi Scientoons. Those are Scientoons in Avdi language. He has given television programs on Scientoons on Virginia 13, WZ TV, USA, DTV Dubai, DD National, DD News, Republic TV, Republic Bharat TV, Aaj Tak, Star News, Sahara Samay, Rajya Sabha TV, Nepal TV, News 18, News 24, Z News, ETV, Trivendram Doordarshan, Gorakhpur Doordarshan, Inadu TV, EMRC Manipur, EMRC Hyderabad, and also on radio, on BBC London, Lotus Radio, South Africa, AIR, AIR, FM, Gyanswa, Red FM, CMS FM. He is the recipient of many international and national awards, namely the Outstanding Young Person of the World Award given by Junior Chamber International USA, an award that is given to 10 selected persons of the world annually. Past recipients of this award include former US President John Kennedy, Richard Nixon, Dr. Henry Kissinger, Jackie Chan, and many more. He has received the Outstanding Young Person of India Award given by Indian Junior Chamber. Past winners include Sunil Gavaskar, Ravi Shastri, P.T. Usha, Pankaj Judas, Sudha Chandan. He has received National Award for Science Writing by Indian Science Writers Association, New Delhi. He has received Silver Medal for the Best Lecture in the Asian Conference held at National University of Singapore, Singapore. He is international brand ambassador of Singapore-based magazine, The Young Scientist, which is read by more than one lakh children in Japan, Hong Kong, Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, Malaysia, and also India. India selected him as the international brand ambassador. American Chemical Society, USA, had selected him as ACS Chemistry Ambassador of the International Year of Chemistry 2011. He has authored many books too, titled Scientunic Tell Tale of Genome and DNA, co-authored with Dr. Lalji Singh and Dr. M. W. Pandit, Hyderabad, Bye Bye Corona, published by Vigyan Prasha, DST, Government of India. He has been a member jury at National, Science, National Children's Science Film Festival 2015 and National Akashwani Annual National Awards 2016. He has been an observer at India International Science Film Festival 2016, New Delhi. He is a member at International Society of Bionic Engineering, China, International Association for Media and Communication Research, Canada, Hands-On Science Network, Portugal, and Public Communication of Science and Technology Network, PCST, USA. Sir's profound personality itself speaks volumes about the cognizance, expertise, and versatility he has. And that is the reason why we have got a terrific figure of over 2,500 registrations for this webinar, not only from India, but from different parts of the world, like Sri Lanka, Philippines, Thailand, Pakistan, Nigeria, Romania, Kingdom of Bahrain, Egypt, Syria, Portugal, Nepal, Kenya, Algeria, Iraq, 
Azerbaijan, Macedonia, Saudi Arabia, Ukraine, Bhutan, Malaysia, Ethiopia, Indonesia, Tanzania, United Arab Emirates, Germany, Macau, Libya, United States, Mexico, etc. SPSR feels fortunate to have got your eminence presence with us today, sir. Thank you so much, sir, to have accepted our invitation to deliver a webinar with perspicacity in this area for our thoughtful audience. Our audience is surely going to be benefited and overjoyed with the unparalleled presentation they will speculate today. Now I request Dr. Mathur to kindly brief up today's webinar topic. Over to you, Dr. Mathur. Uh, thank you, Swati Ma'am. Uh, uh, coming to the uh, topic uh, of today's webinar, national webinar uh, on nanotechnology and medical sciences challenges, uh, 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 I'm just uh, briefing about the topic. Uh, basically, uh, coming to the nanotechnology and emerging branch of science, which is uh, uh, today's need, and it is a kind of uh, uh, application of science, a biotechnology application or a kind of metal science application which is being used in different uh, branches of uh, sciences and uh, other fields so that uh, different products can be developed uh, in a meaningful manner for the growth uh, and uh, upliftment of the society as well as uh, for uh, the particular promise, uh, purposes. Suppose if it is uh, used for the agriculture, definitely these, uh, these products are being used uh, in a versatile manner and can be utilized for uh, a specific uh, uh, generation, a new generation technology, and uh, that can be uh, utilized for the welfare of the farmers and other uh, components. Coming to the medicine, uh, the, the nanotechnology is uh, widely being used today, and uh, different products have been developed, different applications, different uh, instruments have been uh, developed. And uh, today, as we are wit witnessing the unprecedented growth in research in the area of nanoscience in the medicine sector. So. Uh, uh, there are different challenges also uh, which, which we have to overcome, but uh, as soon as uh, the researches are being going on and uh, different applications, uh, different studies are being going on the nanotechnology in different branches of science, we are getting aware of uh, the kind of uh, shortcomings as well as the applications, the meaningful applications of uh, nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is uh, a branch which is uh, a promising branch for the uh, future ahead and this uh, uh, technology is uh, being used uh, uh, and for versatile uh, applications and uh, uh, we are uh, witnessing, we are developing the different uh, approaches and different instruments and different medical devices for uh, uh, the upliftment of the medical sector as well as different other sectors. Now, nanotechnology is not only used in uh, a specific field, but is uh, widely being used for every field. And uh, when coming to the medicine, there are uh, different specific particles, different optimum sizes are being developed so that uh, these sizes are being uh, recognized for the uh, particular product development or the particular formulation development. Now, uh, upcoming, uh, going, uh, moving towards uh, our lecture, uh, and uh, I am uh, just uh, handing to Swati Ma'am for uh, uh, briefing the profile of uh, uh, Srivastava sir, and for inviting him uh, to deliver the lecture. Thank you, Ma'am. Thank you so much, Dr. Mathur, to have briefed up today's webinar topic. Now I request uh, Dr. Srivastav to kindly uh, proceed uh, with the webinar. Namaste to everyone. Thank you so much, Swati. Uh, Dr. Shashi Alok, Dr. Mathur, uh, respected audience from different parts of the world. It's a great honor for me to talk to you. And uh, before I start my lecture, I'll tell you first how I deliver a lecture. So I'll tell you briefly about sign tune, then I go on to the main topic, and then you can enjoy the whole thing. So just I'll open my PPT, you can see that. So can you see the PPT now? Yes, sir. Yeah. 
So the topic today is nanotechnology and medical science. What are the challenges we have? Uh, here at the bottom, you can see uh, my institute where I worked for 34 years. And that is uh, one of the premier institute of CSIR called Central Drug Research Institute in Lucknow, India. It's one of the most premier institute for drug research. Uh, and we are doing a lot of work, including the testing for COVID-19 samples also nowadays. So, travel a lot around the world. And uh, most of the time uh, I was traveling, but nowadays, you know, uh, you must have heard this word webinar only during the pandemic. Before the pandemic, we hardly knew what is a webinar. So webinar is basically a seminar which we conduct over the net. All of us know very well now. What is the advantage here? Sitting in Lucknow, I can be in touch with you in any part of the world. You can talk to me. You can chat with me. You can ask questions. You can see me. I can see you like that. So what is the advantage here? I'm talking from my home. And you can see very comfortably here. Uh, what is the advantage when you talk from home? So here, for example, I am and I'm telling my wife, darling, I'm fully ready now to deliver it, my talk. Can I get a cup of tea, please? Watch carefully below my belt, you know. So this is the advantage, you know, we have. So uh, I delivered lecture using sign tools. And this is the concept I started for the first time in the world. And then a uh, science called sign tunics. So briefly in five, seven minutes, I'll tell about that. Then I'll go on to the main topic. So when you attend most of the scientific lectures, you see how you feel. They are boring many times, they are technical. And so you curse yourself why you are in the lecture. After some time, what happens? You start sleeping because there is no connectivity with the speaker and the audience. And nowadays in lectures, nobody sleeps what they do. They take out their mobile and they finish from WhatsApp to Facebook to everything. So you are very happy. That means the speaker is very happy that audience is attentively listening to him. The fact is something different that they are not listening to you at all. They are busy in their own words on their mobile. So why it happens? The reason is very simple. I don't have connectivity with the audience. And frankly speaking, whenever you attend any lecture, you decide in the first five minutes whether you will listen to the lecture or you will not. Then remain is only a formality, you know, either you are sitting there, or if you are on net, you can switch off your uh, video and then go away. So here, I'll take you to the world of sign tunes today, the gift of India to the world. And this is my website, signtune.com. So how I started my journey as a communicator, as a speaker, you can see, this is the country called Singapore, a beautiful country. Many of you must have gone over there. Here I delivered the first lecture of my life. Date was 26 May 1988. The topic was development of drugs and pharmaceutical industry in developing countries. And I thought my lecture is going to be very boring. So I am not only a scientist, at the same time, my art is very good. So I am a good cartoonist also. So I used to make a lot of science cartoons for several magazines in India and abroad. So I thought, why not to use cartoons in my lecture? Because many of the prime minister, president, they watch Tom and Jerry, they watch Mr. Bean. The kids are very fond of a lot of cartoon channels on our television. So I thought, why not to use cartoons in my lecture? But when I selected those cartoons, I realized those cartoons have got science also. They are cartoons. So I thought, why not to give them a new name? And that's how I named them Sign Tune. I remember this lecture when I started, I was terribly nervous. Time given to me was only 10 minutes. And my lecture was for one hour, so what to do now? So I started my lecture and I announced that I'm going to show you a new concept called Sign Tune for the first time probably in the world. And my lecture, because of several cartoons, was liked by many people. And best part was that, a lecture went uninterrupted for one hour and chairman and forgot to the bill, give the bill. So here in the first lecture of my life, I got the first international award. And I never knew that on 26 May 1988, I created a history that a new word was born called sign tune. So what are the sign tunes? 
Science tunes are the cartoons which are based on science. Their job is not to make you laugh and smile only, but they tell you a lot about new researches, subjects, data concepts in a very simple way, understandable way, and in a very interesting way so that you can enjoy and you don't forget that. So in a typical sign tune, because this is the way I'll be delivering the rest of my lecture, what exactly is a sign tune? So on the, in sign tune, on the left-hand side, there is a scientific information which I want to convey to you. Then comes a cartoon in the yellow box side. And then what cartoon speaks comes as satire. That means what cartoon speaks. So suppose I have to give a lecture to you on dengue, malaria, filaria. They are all parasitic diseases. So if suppose by chance you don't know what is a parasite or parasitology, can you follow my lecture? Answer is no. So I must tell you first what is a parasite. And all of you know very well, plants and animals which depends uh, on others for their survival, they are called parasites. And a study of parasite is known as parasitology. Very simple thing. Now this is the sign suppose I want to convey to you, then there comes a cartoon. These cartoons are drawn by me only. So here is a department of parasitology. In this, you can see a lot of parasites are there in the dish, Escheris, roundworm, Entamoeba histolytica that causes blood dysentery, then flatworm, Tinea solium. And then they are all talking. What they are talking, you can read that. They are talking that, see these scientists, they exploit us for publishing research papers, getting PhD, attending seminars, visiting abroad, and still they call us parasite. Who is the real parasite? It's not that these are the parasite, probably we are the parasite because uh, we exploit them for our benefit, like PSD, seminar, foreign visits, postdoc, even getting green card in USA, so, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, I want to show you another very interesting, recently, uh, as uh, Dr. Swati was telling you, I wrote a book on Corona, Bye Bye Corona. Uh, so I want to show you exactly a sign tune from that book you must have heard million times now what is social distancing. But if I want to define it uh, scientifically, I can say social distancing is a non-pharmaceutical infection prevention. That means without you doing any medicine, you know, how you can treat yourself or how rather I can say make yourself safe. So suppose any person is affected with the corona and you are keeping a safe distance of six feet away from him. Uh, there are no chances virus can come close to you and then you will be safe and you will not be infected. So here, see the cartoon part is a designer mask emporium. A lady scientist has come to buy a mask and here is the shopkeeper who was a very smart person. Uh, he knew that uh, she is a professor in a medical college and so he said to the lady, latest electronics and nanotechnologies used to design this social distancing mask. You must have never heard about it. Mask, you know, but not social distancing mask. He said, if anyone reaching close to you one meter, it will give an alarm and it has a built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and above all, it is automatically changing the color matching to your dress. So what exactly here on the left-hand side is a supplemented by a cartoon and that's how the sign tune comes. Uh, the concept was very new. So I thought how to get it established around the world. And it was not easy for me sitting in India. So I started sending my sign tunes to American Chemical Society, International Biochemistry England, International Appearance and Applied Chemistry, so then WHO, UNESCO, UNEP. The list is very long. And I'm very happy they all accepted the concept. And within one year, the committee that gives Nobel Prize, Royal Swedish Academy, they accepted my paper on sign tune. Uh, and in the 32nd International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry World Congress. That was held in Stockholm, Sweden. So here, what I propose that how you can explain the rules of chemistry using sign tunes. So remember uh, atom. In the atom, in the center, there is a nucleus. Around the nucleus, the electrons are moving in circular orbits, which is called orbital. So in S orbital, maximum two electrons can be there, P6, D10, and in F, 14 electrons can be there. So suppose there is P orbital. P orbital has three boxes, it can accommodate maximum six electrons. So suppose four electrons are there, so it is not possible that they will, two will be there in first, two will be there in second, and third one will be empty. So there is a rule for that, that first single, single fill up will be there, 
after that doubling will start this is called hun's rule now here a professor has come with his wife to attend the conference and here there is a notice says allotment of double room in this hotel is based on hun's rule that the rooms will not be doubled till they are occupied singly first so you can imagine he goes to one room she goes to another when doubling starts you can imagine what will happen so after delivering 600 lectures uh for starting starting from australia to asia to africa to europe to america on december 5 2006 i coined it as a new science called scientonics today i am very happy scientonics is being taught in the msc syllabus of many universities in india and abroad so scientonics is a new branch of science where you can communicate science using scientonics so i made a website i told you scientune.com and that was inaugurated by iupac secretary general professor david black and uh, this is a picture of rashtrapati bhavan at the president house in new delhi india <coughs> why i am delivering today's lecture credit goes to this person called dr apj abdul kalam farmer president of india and when i met him in new delhi in rashtrapati bhavan i made a cartoon instantly in front of him and after that he asked me what do you do with the cartoons i said sir i use them for delivering lectures on various science subjects and he thought uh, that why not i should deliver lecture on nanotechnology also so because of dr kalam uh, i came into this area otherwise uh, i never did any work on nanotechnology but i thought how to make it popular so uh, coming on to the main topic of nanotechnology here is the man who gave the first idea inter- and his name is richard finman nobel prize winner in physics all of you know very well in 1959 he gave a very famous talk and the talk was you know the there is a plenty of room at the bottom and he thought you no know, at that time actually he said can can we work at nano scale that 1 nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter 10 to the power minus 9 he said can we design a small machines like atom and molecules so that was very funny idea and uh, people were shocked really i met one person professor d and dhar from iit kanpur who heard this lecture he was present that day in 1959 when uh, richard finman was delivering the lecture and i asked him sir what was the response he said everybody thought richard finman has gone mad how at that level we can design something which we cannot see at all which we need only to see through electron microscope so it idea was that i want to build a billion tiny factories models of each other which are manufacturing simultaneously the principle of physics as far as i can see do not speak against the possibility of maneuvering things atom by atom so he thought can we make those things at that scale only and uh, this was something very crazy very weird idea when he gave the talk that day so uh, uh, here you can see in the cartoon part there is a speaker on the right hand side with the red tie and he is being introduced and uh, his, his introducer is telling professor yamamoto is the renowned nanotechnologist as you are seeing him he is a totally devoted dedicated and committed scientist in the area of nanotechnology now nanotechnology i told you is building things and devices on the scale of atoms and molecules what exactly is nano nano basically is a greek word that means dwarf dwarf means you know short heighted people you know anything which is short so 1 nanometer exactly is 1 billionth of a meter in hindi i can say 1 meter ka 100 karodwa hissa 10 to the power minus 9 so this is the size of 1 nanometer now can you imagine when you do anything at this level how difficult it is to do something so you can imagine the diameter of a human hair is on an average 80000 nanometer so here uh, is a very interesting uh, uh, cartoon here the sign tune you can see uh, one politician has come and he he was told about the nanotechnology he said uh, professor you don't have even the basic knowledge even a kid in india knows that nano is the first small car which is designed by a indian company owned by tatas 
and nanotechnology is not new. It is not some by someone in America or some other countries. Nano is exactly what is the car over here. So uh, actually what happened, uh, K. Eric Drexler, he is the person who gave the word nanotechnology. Actually, he defined the size of the nanomaterial. And uh, he said, anything between one to 100 nanometer will be called a nanomaterial. That was the basic concept K. Eric Drexler gave. And I, as you can see him, he's a very intelligent, handsome and cute and very nice person. Look his beard, how nice he's looking. Can you see him? Answer is no. Because I put his nano picture here in the center, now here, that is his picture comes. Huh? So, but the basic term nanotechnology was not given by either Richard Finman or by Pro Professor K. Elix Extra. It was given by a Japanese called Professor Norio Taniguchi. 1974, he gave the term nanotechnology. So that's how uh, from nano science to nanomaterial to nanotechnology, the line goes. And uh, what happens, you know, what is unique about this, that at this scale, the color, strength, conductivity, and reactivity can differ entirely from the original material when it is at the normal size. And uh, can you believe carbon nanotubes are 100 times stronger than steel, and but six times lighter? So this is something very unique, you know, that the color, strength, conductivity, and reactivity of the nanomaterial may be entirely different with the normal material. So here, there are two ladies, two girls, one of them got married on the right hand side. Uh, in India, mostly after the marriage, they wear a special dress called sari. And this girl is sharing experiences with her friend. And she is telling she was a very nice, sober and kind hearted lady before. But after my marriage, she became totally changed. So I call her a nano mother-in-law now. I want to give you one simple example. You know, aluminum, we can use it very nicely for pack, packing our sandwiches, burgers, and other things, you know. If, our pressure cooker is made up of the aluminum also. But if you chop down aluminum to 30 to 40 nanometer size, it becomes an explosive. So you can imagine at this nano scale, the same aluminum was totally safe at the normal size, you can say, normal condition, at 40 nanometer size, the same becomes explosive. So this is the difference how, uh, with the change of the size, the quality changes. Now, uh, this technology is going to be very important for a country like uh, India or any developing countries, you know, because we can produce a lot of things, we can make a lot of changes. Huh? And here, uh, what happened, the professor has gone to take uh, lunch, in a conference on nanotechnology, international conference on nanotechnology. He was confused what to eat. But the person who was serving the food, the chef told, take it whatever you like, veg, non-veg, Italian, Thai, Chinese, continental, everything is in plenty. See it carefully. We are serving nano food, sir. So that means all the plates are full with the nano food. Kindly see that. Now, Richard Smalley, who's a Nobel laureate in chemistry, uh, he said, see, when you start a project somewhere, you need funding. And for funding, you have to convince the government. So the U.S. House of Committee on Science, uh, he gave a, a statement that in 1999, that impact of nanotechnology on the health, wealth, and lives of the people will be at least the equivalent of the combined influence of microelectronics, medical imaging, computer engineering, and man-made polymers developed in this century. So that means that was the importance. He wanted to show to the Congress, the government of USA, that why we need funding to work on nanotechnology. So here you can see the grant was allotted and uh, the directors were not very happy in the blue tie. Uh, what is the reason behind? Uh, he is being told by the junior scientists uh, he's telling that they said our project is on nanomaterials, so we must be given a matching grant. So total money sanctioned is US dollar 10 only against the amount of US $1,000 million grant we have applied for because the grant was also given at the nano scale. Now, today you can see uh, where is the nanotechnology, but nanotechnology has reached to your house. It is around you. The problem is that we don't see that 
and that's how today i can see or we can say now a tsunami you know when tsunami started from indonesia it was not noticeable it was only noticeable when it hit to the shore areas and created a havoc that time people got panic so nano technology is in a similar way coming to us and one day it is going to impact the entire human life and it will affect everything from the batteries we used to the paint we wear to treat the cancer so you can imagine in how many areas of our life almost everything is going to be penetrated by nanotechnology so here is a scientist and uh, he was to go somewhere to deliver a talk and he is telling oh god i have got an invited lecture i am getting too late has anyone seen my nano laptop now these are the areas you can see where the nanotechnology has already been applied medical and pharmaceutical textile agriculture information technology materials telecom chemicals automotive energy production aerospace environment defense bio inspired engineering so there are several areas where the nanotechnology is going to be applied and being applied so i this is the two smugglers so long back in india people were smuggling things from nepal to india chinese goods but now everything is available in india so their business got spoiled but suddenly one smuggler is very happy and he is sharing the whole story to another smuggler friend that why we should start our old business again solid income by nobody can catch that we are smuggling nano materials our police is not smart enough to catch that we are smuggling nano materials so here you can see uh, these uh, uh, carbon based nano materials they are cylindrical they called nano tubes one which is moving uh, there is a ball like structure called bucky ball huh? or the fullerenes you know this is how they look like now come i want to show you share a very interesting story about an indian scientist his name is dr afsar ahmed is presently director nanotechnology research center in the aligarh muslim university in india and what he did you know normally uh, you have to produce nano material so it's not an easy process but i want to share a very unique story of this scientist uh, he is basically a botanist so he was working on a fungus called fusarium oxyporum and uh, he just got curious that can i uh, do some research work with this fungus and the nano material uh, so what he did uh, he took this fungus and put in this gold chloride solution and sodium sil sil silver nitrate solution uh, this fungus and then he forgot it. after 96 hours he marked and he observed that the color of the solution has changed from purple to brown that means something has happened in the solution and he was surprised when he analyzed he was surprised that even at the room temperature the nano particles of gold and silver were created uh, he used an electron microscope and size was confirmed the size was 6 to 14 nanometer so this was something a very unique discovery dr absar ahmed did so here you can see this is the fungus in the conical flask and he is telling that rat that oh yes i feel very sad whole life i infected only and did nothing which you can call good now as a repentance i thought to do some good work and that's the reason i thought why not to produce nano material out of silver and gold solutions and now i want to tell you one thing about a very unique that is henna henna is called mehndi in india and uh, most of the marriages in asia mostly in india pakistan and other countries the henna is an integral part of the marriage and the ladies apply their on their palm and it looks beautiful and but is what means initially used as a med, um, you can say a medicine because during the rainy season lot of ladies used to work wash utensils so their hands used to be wet and they used to get the fungal infection that time this mehndi or the henna was used and to give as a anti fungal compound but there is a compound in apin in henna or mehndi and this also has the unique capacity to produce the nano material i think this was something very unique discovery by the scientists that henna leaf the leaf of this mehndi also can produce nano particle so here there is a girl telling her auntie that uh, there actually there was a boy she he used to watch her every day so she thought that he is in love with him, with her so she proposed to him but there was some problem as what she is that she is saying that i am totally broken auntie he used to see my me every day so i thought he is in love with me 
So I proposed him one day, but he said he's a nanotechnologist and he was only interested in the henna or mehendi on my hand and not in me. So this is something now I want to tell you the application of nanotechnology, how in the area of medical science, this is going to change the scenario in the future. And uh, he's the man called Albert Hips. He was actually the friend of uh, Richard Finman. And one day he gave a very crazy idea. And you can just uh, read that. He said it would be interesting if in surgery, if you could swallow the surgeon. That means, you know, if you have a small surgeon, it can go inside your body, travel inside your body, see where that vect is there. He can carry out the operation or some uh, repair is necessary. And that will be wonderful. There is no need to cut or anything. So this idea was also thought to be very crazy, very funny that time when he discussed with uh, Richard Feynman. But today, whatever he said is going to be a reality very soon. So you can imagine how something which used to look like a fiction, a crazy idea, a weird idea is going to the, be the reality now. Uh, Professor Richard Smalley, I, I told him, uh, I told about uh, him to you. He said, life works in every one of the cells. That means if we can do repair work in a cell, a cell has got several functioning things in the body and all the problem starts with one cell. So if we can do repairment, diagnosis and everything in living things of the cell of the human body, we can do wonderful things in the future. So here is something more important. I want to tell you that how gene, gene therapy or DNA technology uh, and there is a link of nanotechnology. Why we are, get, why we become sick? Because it is there in our DNA, there are genes, genes are affected. And because of these defective genes, sometimes we have infection. So if we can repair the defective genes in the future at the nano level, we can repair a lot of diseases. So here, uh, uh, I want to show you a sign tune and uh, the subject called molecular biology started only when the DNA was discussed and discovered. And here uh, there is a person. And before that, I, I think I must tell you what is actually DNA. See the human body. Human body has 100 trillion cells and all cells except RBC and platelet has got a nucleus. Nucleus has got chromosomes. There are 46 chromosomes in human, 23 in male, 23 in the female. And if you open chromosome, a double helical ribbon-like structure comes and that is called DNA. And a part of DNA doing a specific job in our body, that is called a gene. That means why we become sick, why we get diabetes, why our hairs are black. Sometimes how you smile, how you walk, everything is the copy of your uh, parents or grandparents. So all is carrying from generation to generation in this DNA or through the genes. So here is the cartoon part you can see. Uh, his scientist is not taking food, not taking dinner. The wife is very angry and she's telling, it is enough now. I told you several times that don't do too much work on DNA project. Look carefully, Baba, and eat. It is not DNA, but simple Chinese noodles I have cooked for you. Now coming on to the main thing now. Nowadays, suppose a person has got cancer. Can we have the answer? How many cells are involved? How big is the cancer? How fast the medicine can reach? How fast we can diagnose? How fast we can treat the cancer? Answer is most of the time is no. And I think here, the nanotechnology is going to play a very major role, starting from diagnosis to the treatment. So in future, what happens? See very carefully. Animal cells are, most of the animal cells, the size is 10,000 to 20,000 nanometer in diameter. And what nanomaterial, I told you, one to 100 nanometer. That means if you can make, make devices which are maybe 500, 400 or 1000 nanometer in size, they can travel inside the animal cell or our cell. They can diagnose, they can treat. And that's how the whole crux lies here. That means, you know, this nanotechnology has given a new way what will be the future. So here you can see, this in future there will be nano robots in the body. So, for example, the white colored structure you see, they will be there in our body. They will keep on traveling. They have the database of each and every pathogen we have in the body. The moment any foreign particle comes in our body, whether it's a bacteria or the virus, they tally with their database. 
and once they think you know they decide it is a foreign particle they are equipped with the laser guns and they can decide to finish even though for example you can say the corona virus so this is only an imagination right now but in future it may be the possibility there there may be a medical device that can travel inside your body and do the treatment do the diagnosis and everything uh scientists have made biodegradable nanoparticles for delivery of cancer drugs so this is something very important made up of the polyethylene glycol chains and then you attach with these compound they have also made uh, compounds within the compound that means the inside compound is actually the real drug and that inside compound is toxic so to deliver it safely to the cancer site it is put inside another chemical compound and that compound outer compound degrades when the this nano medicine reaches the exact spot in the body and that's how it is delivered so here uh, i told you uh, that how in future delivery of cancer drugs will be done you know by using uh, biodegradable nanoparticle so there is a pizza delivery boy he has come to the boss a director of a nano uh, research center and he is telling why can't you appoint me it is strange that you believe more in nanoparticles than me look i am delivering pizzas for the last 10 years and always dot on time now biodegradable nanoparticle for delivery of cancer drugs so uh, what happens you know in future they'll be having several these kind of compounds you know uh, which will be biodegradable that means they deliver the cancer drugs inside the body and they degrade so they won't cause any damage to the body and uh, uh, nanoparticle accumulated to a large extent in mice tumors you know they have done some experiments and they found that they have realized that so here for example is a nanoparticle and it's going to a specific part in the body what he's saying he's telling human body is such a huge and vast area that i, I thought if while driving people use gprs for reaching to the exact destination then why not me you know he's having a gps device and so that he can exactly find out whether he has to reach to the lungs to um, liver or to some other parts of the body uh, now they may be using bacteria also for transporting nanoparticles in the future for the treatment of various diseases especially the cancer so especially in the breast cancer uh, they have found you know intestinal cancer oral cancer liver cancer ovarian cancers you know that uh, this can be used very successfully so here today is the great day for india for example we are starting already started uh, corona vaccination uh, that is today january 16 2021 and first the medical experts and the paramedical staff is giving being given the vaccination of the corona in india so they now corona is terribly upset so here you can see two corona they are very sad they are gone now what to do now is a very tough time for them they will not be surviving so uh, one of the thing which is very famous in india is apada vyavah sir that means blessing in disguise that means if you have the worst time what best you can do so another corona is suggesting to him that i have got a million dollar idea why don't we stop this bad work of infecting people and creating you know covid 19 infection we should start a transport company and delivering nano particles all over the body we are already having expertise in the lung delivery you know that means you know very successfully how to reach lung of a human so that means you know rest we can learn and we can do this transporting business of nanoparticles in the human body to different parts of the body now i want to tell you something very interesting this is a very uh, novel discovery uh, many people you might have heard that they are getting cancer and by the time it is diagnosed is a third or fourth stage cancer when nothing can be done or it is very difficult you have to go through very toxic you know chemotherapy chances are very tough you have to struggle with life but if the same is diagnosed at the earlier stage why stage 1 you can say or even beginning of before that is very easy to treat the cancer so sci- scientists have discovered peptide coated iron oxide nanoparticle what is unique about them they go inside your body and they accumulate only where the cancer cells are there and you can use magnetic resonance imaging imaging that means mri you can track these peptide coated iron oxide nanoparticle where they are reaching in the body where they are accumulating and once they are accumulated to a place you at a very early stage you can find out there are chances a person can have some cancerous cells 
For example, researchers injected the particles into mice and tested their ability to locate a brain tumor cell called U87MG. They already knew that this cancer cell is there in the body, in the brain tumor. And now they inject, injected these peptide-coated iron oxide nanoparticle. And as expected, as thought, what happened, these peptide-coated iron oxide nanoparticle finally reached to these cancerous tumor cells U87MG and accumulated over there. It, this gave an idea that we can locate a tumor or the cancer in the human body even at a very early stage. And if we can do that, we can start the treatment, we can save millions of lives. And the nanoparticles used in this case was size was 8.54 nanometers. That was the overall diameter, about six times as smaller than the size of particles currently used in the medicine. So you can imagine how uh, this is discovery itself is going to have a very important impact in the future. So what happens here is a scientist giving a lecture. And as you know, many times we have to give a lecture, we have to make impression also. We are very learned. The speaker is very learned. So he said, in short, I can see, I can call these PCIN as phidine molecules. Phidine molecules, you know, the terrorists who destroy themselves and killing others, you know. Now everybody, all the experts, you know, the audience is confused. What is PCIN? They never heard it. And then the speaker said, oh, you don't know PCIN. It is peptide coated iron oxide nanoparticle. That is similar abbreviation for that only, nothing else, you know. So in Alzheimer's, for example, uh, what happens, you know, a protein known as beta amyloid. So like we have a plaque in the teeth, similarly, you know, the plaque is formed in the brain arteries and then you have a block blockhead and the, you have you may have a brain stroke or you have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia and all the problems. Uh, so what happens here, scientists have discovered that, that curcumin, curcumin is actually found in turmeric. Turmeric is a spice we use. Huh? And it is curcuma langa, the name of the plant. So when they use curcumin, is also uh, is very very effective in several diseases. You know, anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, anti asthmatic It's a very important chemical compound which turmeric has. And when they use gold nanoparticle with curcumin, they could inhibit amyloid formation. That means it will avoid future. In future, you can have. Uh, you don't have brain stroke or maybe you, you will be safe from Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, you know, the disease which are affecting your brain. So here uh, uh, from Termic in India, we also make a face cream which makes your face shining and that is called turmeric vanishing cream. So what happened? Uh, 100 kilograms of the turmeric was given to him to produce curcumin so that in future it can be used for Alzheimer's and other diseases along with the gold nanoparticle, but he could not supply a single gram of curcumin. So he was asked, what is the problem? He said, sir, my colleague, if you see her carefully, when she turns her face, you'll find out where the entire turmeric has gone. And so that I could not produce a single milligram of the curcumin because everything she converted into making the turmeric vanishing cream, which is very good for the face. With due respect to, uh, I think all the ladies scientists, just a cartoon only. And uh, nano nanoparticle in HIV. See, in India, most of the kings, Mughal leaders, you know, if you see their crockery, what they were using in their palaces, the crockery was made up of silver and gold utensils, you know, plate, glass. They were using that were made up of silver and gold. Now, it was recently found that silver in nano size, you know, one to 10 nanometer size, it, it is affecting HIV, that is AIDS virus. And what happens, the glycoprotein, the outer protein you can see here on HIV, actually what happens here, this through this, you know, it attaches to our uh, cells. So, and transfers RNA and that's how it makes DNA. And that's how it's very difficult to diagnose for the medicine that it is a foreign particle in our body. So nano silver, you can see the glycoproteins over here in a circle. It actually, it comes here and that makes the entire HIV immobile and it cannot attach with our T4 cells. And that's how it becomes ineffective. So scientists are trying in future, can we use silver nanoparticles 
for taking care of the HIV. Uh, that's ACE virus, you know. So now you can imagine why many of the kings and uh, uh, Mughal kings, especially, and the royal kings in Rajasthan, they were using silver and gold utensils. Maybe when they were used for taking uh, food and then are drinking water or something, in nano size, maybe the nano silver, nano gold particles were going into their body and they were doing some medicinal effect. That was that might, might be the reason. So it is our body defense system. You can see on the right hand side, HIV is going and already covered by silver nanoparticle. So here the security guard says, our defense system says, hey, you HIV, hold on, don't move further, no entry for you. Now, another very important thing, which nanotechnology is going to change in future. See, when we have a headache, we don't drill our brain and put the head medicine there. Instead, what we do, we take a tablet like paracetamol tablet. We take through our mouth. It goes to our pharynx, then esophagus, then a stomach from a stomach to liver, liver to blood circulation, blood circulation to blood brain barrier. And finally, our headache is cured. Now, what is important here, the medicine is required to take care of a headache, which is happening in your brain part. But the medicine is unnecessarily traveling from mouth to stomach to liver. That means on the way, it may cause damage to the organs through whom it is traveling. So there was a reason, eh? and scientists thought, because you know parastamol, it is very good to take care of your headache or the fever. But if you take more parastamol or maybe beyond the uh, limits, you know, the dose which are not recommended, you take excess dose, it can damage your liver. So scientists thought, can we take care of the situation and can we make a medicine which are photodynamic? That means they go inside your body, but they are inactive. They reach to the exact spot. We track them. We guide them to reach to the exact spot. And then we give them laser and then photodynamic. That means the light makes the medicine dynamic, effective. And that's how the exact point where you need these medicines to be delivered using the laser, finally, exactly on the spot, you can deliver the medicine without causing any side effect on the path it was coming inside your body. So this is called photodynamic therapy. And they discovered, you know, that photofrin a perforin series of compound, which is photodynamic. And then it that means it can be activated by laser, you know, and then it can target the cancer cells of esophagus, bladder, skin, and brain. So it has also some side effects. So now they have made futachlor compound, which will be very effective, especially in the case of oral cancer, where other therapies are not very good, like chemotherapy or radiotherapy. So they are photodynamic therapy, especially uh, for the countries where they use a lot of tobacco and other compounds, you know, causing oral cancer. I think this photodynamic therapy can be very, very important. So here uh, is the case. He's the dog of Bill Gates. Uh, actually, he was having some cancer, and the first time the brain, this photodynamic therapy was applied on the dog of Bill Gates, and so he is the first patient you can see because initially, you know, any therapy is very very expensive. So he got cured of that, and he is there, there telling why so much you and cry about me and the operation I had gone through. After all, I am a VVID like a VVIP. That means very very important person. So he says I am also the dog of not any artery X, Y, Z. I am dog belonging to Bill Gates, the richest person in the world. So V, V, I, D. Now, there are uh, there, there is a one drug called cisplatin. Cisplatin is a very effective drug for the cancer treatment. But scientists have discovered if you take nanoplatinum, it is seven times more toxic to cancer cells than cisplatin. That means more effective. But what is the disadvantage over here? If it is more toxic to cancer cells, it may damage the normal healthy cells of the body. So like egg, you see, you know, in the egg, there is a yellow thing inside and outer side is covered by a white yolk. So what they did, they thought, can we take that nanoplatinum, surround with something safe like cobalt shell, and then deliver in the human body to the point exactly we want then give photodynamic therapy, then cobalt is gone and exactly calculated amount of nanoplatinum, which is seven times more effective than the best drug cisplatin 
can kill the cancer cells. So this is called nano egg technology, nano egg therapy. Uh, there was a person in India who was strictly a vegetarian. So a doctor told his wife that we are going to use nano egg therapy on him to take care of his cancer. So wife got very angry. She said, he's strictly vegetarian. He doesn't take even onion and garlic. How can you give him eggs? The doctor said, no, we are not going to give him the real eggs. It is the name of the technology based on the eggs that we are going to use. And it has nothing to do with the real eggs. Now you must have heard nowadays we are so much, uh, very much concerned about our, especially the tummy, you know, everyone wants to be very slim and trim. So nanotechnology is going to play a very important role here also. The gold nanoparticles, you know, uh, they uh, create heat and what happens, you know, uh, if you put gold nanoparticle here in the tummy, so what happened, they will dissolve the fat and then by liposuction, the fat can be taken out and what happens, your tummy will be slim and trim. So in future, not only in the normal therapy, in cosmetic therapy are making you slim and trim and fit, uh, the nanotechnology will be used. So here, uh, uh, the tummy is telling, thank you so much, nanotechnology. Now the good days are ahead, you know, because I'm also going to be benefited by this technology. Uh, there is one thing more I wanted to leave in this uh, Corona time. What happens, you know, must have seen during pandemic, the lockdown time, most of the shopping malls, picture halls, metro cinemas, then metro trains, airports, all were closed. Why? Because on airports and shopping mall and metro uh, trains, there is air conditioning system which recirculate the air. So it was thought that suppose uh, a person is sitting in a picture hall or he's traveling in a metro, then what will happen if he's infected with corona, then that can be recirculated and many people can be infected by him and thus it will be a very serious issue. And that was the reason they closed all the places of uh, places where a lot of people are sitting very close to each other. So here, even if you are sitting six feet away from a person, but in air, it is uh, corona is circulated, there are chances you might have been infected. So uh, you must have seen nowadays the air conditioners we buy. They are already, they kill bacteria. Why they do it? they have got a coating of titanium dioxide nanoparticle. And this compound kills actually the pathogen, the bacteria. And what happens, you know, it has a powerful oxidizing agent called hydroxyl radicals. They are actually the thing which they destroy the airborne germs. But recently, you know, scientists discovered in Corona times what can be done. So they have discovered a nanomaterial of nickel foam. And when they heated this nickel foam nanomaterial at 200 degrees centigrade, and passed air through it, it could kill 99.8% of the corona virus. So in future, there are chances that uh, when in our picture halls, in our airports, in metros, anything you know which is using air recirculation for air conditioning, we can implant, you know, we can transplant or you can plant these nickel foam heated, uh, you can say the devices, where the air before going to the common people or through the crowd or to the shopping mall or to the people in metro or in the airport, it is passed through nickel foam nanomaterial heated to 200 degrees centigrade. Uh, and so though no normally you must have heard that coronavirus cannot survive above 70 degrees centigrade, but at this degree centigrade, 200 degrees centigrade, why when you are passing bulk amount of air through it, there are chances 99.8 corona will be killed finally and then the air you breathe will be healthier will be free of the corona so here you can see there are two bacteria and they are very sad and one is advising another bear the seat but don't go near to any ac my uncle was sitting in an ac without knowing it it has the latest catch and kill air filter fitted with the nickel foam nanomaterial. So poor uncle, he thought when the air will come, he will be cooled and he'll be very comfortable instead. He never knew that a hot air is going to come and kill him instantly. And that's how it happened with him. So don't go near to any AC. That's what he is writing to his friend. Now, uh, the cloths have been used, uh, used now. The scientists have discovered cloths which can kill any bacteria coming close to the cloth. You know, 
These are the nanocloths specially designed, coated with certain material of the nanotechnology, nanomaterials. If the moment any bacteria comes onto these glass, it is immediately killed. So what happens in future, we can have protective clothing, not only to kill the bacteria, maybe in future also for corona or corona-like viruses coming in the future to us. At that time, it will be very easy for us to move in the market in public places wearing a mask, which will be uh, also further developed, you know, to kill the corona. And also, not only up till now, the mask we have, it only filters, you know, but in future, maybe we can have inspired by these cloths, we can design mask also before it goes to your nose. The moment coronavirus comes to your body, it is killed. So I think that can be the possibility in the future. Already these cloths have been designed by Olivia Ong, uh, who was working in a company in Los Angeles in America. And she uh, was, she realized, you know, a lot of problem that uh, the air you breathe, you know, because uh, that's a problem. So she thought, you know, uh, how to take care of all these issues. So in future, there may be class available to us, which will kill coronavirus the moment virus comes in contact with the class we are wearing today. So here is the boy and he's telling, hi, coronavirus, where are you? Bring all your cousins, brothers and sisters. Come on, my dress is ready to absorb you. Now, I want to tell you something very interesting about one thing called a tree called India. Uh, name in India, the botanical name of this tree is Aza Drakta Indica. This is the Coimbatore airport in India. See, any airport in the world, any big tree is not allowed near airport, but this tree was not killed. Why? Because of the medicinal importance this tree has. See, in India, most of the time people use to pick up this neem for brushing the teeth. Now imagine this neem has got certain chemical, which is anti-cancer, it's antibacterial, antifungal, anti-diabetic, it increases your immunity. Uh, so many, you, I think for neem it is said, it is itself is a complete hospital. So if you are using even for teeth, you know, your teeth will be, uh, and gums will be healthier. Your blood, pro, pu, uh, pu, the pu, purify the blood, and then antibacterial effect will be there. There will be no cavities. And it will save you from oral cancer. It will save you from gingivitis and pyrrhea. That is the kind of advantage. Now in India, you know, the first thing when people used to get up in the morning, they used to brush the teeth. And earlier they were not using toothbrushes and toothpaste. So in America, I could see uh, this, you know, um, these neem tricks are being sold $10 for six pieces. In India, you can get in 10 cents also the same uh, six pieces. What is unique in this, you know, remember when we were brushing our teeth with the neem twig in the morning, maybe through tongue in nano quantities, we were supplying medicines to our body. And that is, maybe that was making us fit as an antibacterial, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, so many properties, blood purifier, and that neem has got. That is the thing we were doing, you know, but I think we forgot that. So these are the things, you know, at nanoscale in the future. I want to tell you another thing that scientists have recently discovered the leaf of the neem tree. Azar, Direkta, and Dika have also the capacity to produce nanoparticle. That means if you put gold chloride solution and silver nitrate solution in with the neem leaves, they produce double cavity nanoparticle which are very very unique so you can imagine this is something we forgot and i think uh, if we brush our teeth with neem twig in india or anywhere in the world where it is available we will supply in nano quantity medicine needed for several diseases to our body now i want to share you one thing also and that is uh, in india one of the temples i visited kunarsan temple in odisha and there was a statue I could see that in this temple was built in 13th century. That means 1275 the temple was made, Kunar Sun Temple. And that time there were no antiseptics, there were no antibiotics, but still there is a lady. And what was the science there after the delivery? What was something, what was the medicine to disinfect the body of the pregnant lady or the 
lady which has given birth to a baby. So the technology was that the neem leaves were burned and the smoke which is coming out was highly medicinal. And when the lady was exposing that smoke to the, her body, all infections were killed. That is the kind of sign. So in the last, I want to show you, and I want to remind you also with another Corona sign tune, which is there in my book. And all of you must have been told million of times what to do. Wear a mask, cover your face when you go out. Huh? Wash your hands frequently. Why? Because you know, when you wash your hands, the soap kills the outer covering of the virus of Corona. And that's how what happens. It is killed and you are safe. Keep social and physical distancing. That's also you know very well. What is the good part of the Corona? It at least, no doubt, it affected millions of people around the world, paralyzed the entire life on the earth. But it also reminded us of some of the good things we forgot. That is to keep ourselves fit, do yoga, exercise, walking, jogging, and then start taking certain things like haldi, chavanpras, that means the Ayurvedic medicines in India, kiloi is uh, Tinoscura cardifolia, another very important med medicine for us, us, lemon, ginger, so many other things, you know, avoid unnecessary travels. So I want to show you another very interesting uh, sign tune in the end. Uh, uh, this was a big challenge for all of us for good to go for hair cutting during the pandemic time. Uh, everyone was telling that the hair cutting shop or the saloon may be the biggest point for corona infection because a lot of people use the same instruments like knife, scissors and everything, you know, uh, or the brush or the towels uh, and the one barber is using for several persons or maybe the chairs are infected or the handles are infected, all kind of things, you know. So we got panic and many of us never got our hair cut for a very long time. So here, uh, on the person on the right hand side, you can see his beard is grown, his hairs are grown. He thought he can go to a roadside barber shop and get his hair cut very easily. Because he thought he is a poor person. He doesn't know ABCD of what is all these high five things. So he can go there and ask him to cut the hair uh, at least. But he was surprised when the barber told him few things. What are the things? Barber told him that fill up this form mentioning your Aadhaar card number. It's a social security card number like in India, for example. Your travel history record of the last one month. Attach your latest corona test report. And then apply online for hair cutting to me. When I'll send back an OTP to you, only then come back with that OTP and with your own sanitizer, only then I'll cut your hairs. So just, just to remind you, you know, that please take care of your health. Take care of Corona because it is still not gone. Uh, it's a great day for India. I salute all the scientists of India, all the experts, the prime minister, and every single person who is involved in developing the two Indian vaccines. Covishield and Covaxin, which is being given to the health workers in India today. It's a great day, historical day. So with these words, I'm extremely grateful to all the concerned people who invited me. Um, thank you, Dr. Swati, Dr. Alok, Dr. Mathur. And I, it's a great honor for me to talk to such a privileged audience, very learned audience. And uh, thank you for being a witness to my 1367th invited lecture which i delivered today and here is a contact detail my website you can note down you can log on to it my email my facebook my twitter account you can be in touch with me if you have anything i'll be more than happy to answer you but i told you in the beginning i never did any work on nanotechnology my area job as on the suggestion of dr apj abdul kalam former president of india I thought I should spread awareness about nanotechnology among the people that here is a very exciting area for the pharmaceutical people, for the medical people to come in this area, explore a lot of things, find out what the best way of diagnosis can be there, how best we can treat certain diseases, especially the cancer diseases. And I tell you in future, when you have to do the repair at the genetic level, remember DNA. And I told you 100 trillion cells are there. Oh, and in DNA, you know, when you want to do a change at that genetic level, you need the same very miniature device and their nanotechnology is going to play a very major role in the future and especially the gene therapy. And for example, if you have a defective gene in your body, 
I remember uh, there was a case that a person in England was having all the daughters born in their family. They were carrying a very dangerous defective breast cancer gene. So he thought if I get a daughter and she might get the same breast cancer gene, BRCA1, BRCA2, then she may also die an early death because none of the ladies in his family survived more than 35 years. So he went for gene therapy. And then what happened? The defective genes were, he actually in vitro fertilization was done. And the fertilized egg, which was not having that defective gene was transplanted in the uterus of the wife of that person. And so a healthy girl was born, which will not have breast cancer in the future. So I think gene therapy or the DNA technology and nanotechnology has a very close link. Both are very important for diagnosis, for treatment uh, of the various diseases in the future, especially the cancer and other diseases. So with these words, I think, thank you so much for listening to me very carefully. And thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm very honored. Uh, it's a great day for me. And uh, Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for highly inspiring time with us. The non peril presentation left us hooked and spellbound, undoubtedly. We really appreciate the time you spared for us today, despite of the busy schedule. The elocution and skill with which you led the audience through this webinar was simply astounding and impressive to watch. Our audience was enthralled by the insights you have shared with them. And I certainly cannot thank you enough for giving your precious time for us today, sir. And uh, even, sir, uh, uh, while the webinar was going on, I uh, saw that we have got excellent response from our global audience that we can uh, uh, see through the uh, graphs we have got. Sir, as I can see here, the audience has really comprehended and extolled the session today and their active involvement in it has aroused certain queries too. So I request you to kindly address their queries one by one as I read out them for you. And before I begin with the queries round, I request our viewers to kindly spare a few minutes and filling the feedback link that has been sent on the live chat. So reading out the first query, sir. Uh, given the nano size of the particles, are there any effective respirator filters to guard against inhalation? Actually, not yet. You can say practically not yet, but there are uh, the work is going on now. In the future, I told you, you know that uh, N95, for example, you know, is very effective in. Uh, uh, one case is directly related to me. I remember I met my friend and I never knew he was Corona positive. We were talking three feet away to each other and both of us were wearing a 95 mask. So uh, I thought why he's hesitating to talk to me. And uh, I took it normally, but even then in the evening, I got shocked to know that he was Corona positive. So for next 14 days, I was very curious what will happen to me. Luckily, nothing happened. So I think in 95 filters are there, which are very effective. I think that is enough. But in future, I told you now, uh, the cartoon I showed you, a uh, mask, which is social distancing mask, is only a cartoon. But can you believe Xiaomi company has really come up with a mask which can uh, uh, store data. It can be charged also. So in future, maybe I told you like nickel, foam material we made for air conditioning to cool corona. Maybe we can develop certain material which can be coated on the uh, mask and then uh, the moment corona comes, you know, uh, it will not survive and it will be immediately killed. Right now what happens even the corona comes, you know, it is there on the outer side of the mask. And that's why it is told many times, don't touch your mask from the outside. And if you touch it, don't touch your mouth our nose, you know, because if that mask has got some corona virus on that, that can lead to your lung. So I think in future there are chances and the whole world is uh, working on this. Let us see. Hope for the best. And nanotechnology certainly is going to play a big role in this. Definitely, sir. Thank you, sir. So the next question is that 
what do you feel are the repercussions for extended life through utilization of nanotechnology see a lot of things are there you know for example i told you the early diagnosis of the cancer if that is possible uh, it will be a boon for us many lives could be saved you know and most of the time i told you now people many times they have side effects that means a drug is very effective but remember you know many of the drugs you take the side effects are very serious why i gave you very simple example of paracetamol that though we need it for headache it is traveling inside the body where it is not required so i think in future we can have a targeted drug delivery system using a specific nanoparticle i told you even the bacteria can be used maybe uh, there are as molecule scientists have designed molecules within the molecule that means there is a molecule inside there is another molecule which is actual drug but to avoid the side effect if it is covered by another molecule which is safe and then we can carry to the exact site and then we allow this outer molecule to go out and then the drug can be delivered so i think i see a great future uh, many of the things are there in your house you know your uh, today nowadays you must have seen uh, uh, televisions now their screen is very thin remember i remember long back somebody told me that i am making a television which will be hung on a wall like a calendar so we all made fun of him and we said it is impossible what the hell you are talking but today that is a reality now so i think because of these nano things you know uh, nano technology in other areas for example there are several things you know i deliver lecture on biospide engineering in biospide engineering they are mostly focusing on nano properties of material uh, and then they are, they have made nano class now nano class you can use it you know without washing for 15 days to 20 days you can wear you know there will be no problem now they have made a paint that doesn't allow the dust to settle on the wall so there are several of the things you know they have made biospide engineering is area i delivered lecture for 3 hours you know uh, several examples are there so medicine or the treatment of the nano medicine nano drug delivery nano therapy you can see one is aspect which i was focusing but there are other several areas you know uh, for example i want to give you one simple example uh, many of us you know might have seen our grandfather grandmother they go to the toilet they slip there and then they fall and they have a severe bone fracture especially the hip bone fracture at the age of 85 90 the operation is not possible so sometimes very chronic severe infection takes place and then death occurs because of that only so scientists discovered you know there is a tree frog in the rainforest area this tree frog never falls from the tree though it is slimy it is raining it is slippery so when they discovered the limb portion of the frog they discovered at the nano size you know they have billions of grippers and that gripper makes a very strong grip so as a result inspired by that scientists now have made uh, chappal shoes and sandals and if you wear that you can walk on any slippery surface and so you will not fall down so that means we are our grandfather grandmother will not fall down and if they not fall down they'll not have those a uh, fracture especially the hip bone fracture and the, at old days you know the bones are already weak due to osteoporosis so we are more the bones are more fragile so they are easily broken and that time the recovery the healing is also very slow so i think there are several areas nanotechnology is entering your life there are nan nano paints are there now nano cloths are there nano materials are there recently i uh, i remember i was in china and they showed me a small lizard called gecko gecko also has 29000 grip points per square centimeter so they when they discovered in detail they found the size of the some of the gripper is 200 nanometer so they exactly copied that structure and they have made gecko tape so in future what will happen you can use that gecko tape for putting your split ac on the wall your led on the wall there is no need for drilling or anything now i have recently seen seashells in i remember i was walking in a beach i think it was rio de janeiro in brazil those seashells you know they are very strongly attached to the rock you cannot take them out they are so strong let us see they have got and then ocean waves are coming the marine water is constantly washing those seashells but they are strongly attached to the rock 
Now scientists have discovered that adhesive. Now that adhesive, can you imagine when we do surgical operations, the blood is coming out. And that time joining the skin with that adhesive will be the most advantageous thing. That means even the blood is circulating, the blood is flowing, you can join the skin from where you are getting the idea from a seashell which doesn't know the ABCD of nanotechnology. So I think there are several ways, you know, it is going to affect our life. And uh, I told you bio-inspired engineering when I delivered lecture there for three hours, you know, the several areas are coming even I have got a nano shard with me, you know, you go, you can put coffee on that, tea on that, chole on that, and it rolls down, nothing goes. So that is available in India now. In many countries, you can buy nano shards now. Nano cloths are available, nano jeans, nano t-shirts, nano shirts are available. So what will be the impact? Not only, you know, it will save you several other things. For example, you can design a cloth in the future. I told you already, uh, they have designed cloths so that it can kill any bacteria virus come in contact with. Similarly, you know, if you don't wash it for several days and it is as fresh, as new as it on the first day, then you save a lot of water. You save billions of tons of detergent all over the world. Thank you, sir. I now request Dr. Mathur if he has a certain queries uh, to. Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, it, it was a great and wonderful talk. Very knowledgeable and uh, full of knowledge, yes, full, of, uh, full of everything, yeah. Uh, but uh, since we are researchers, we have some uh, queries. And uh, uh, first uh, query is, sir, as a biotechnologist, as a biologist, we used to, prepare, uh, used to have the technology for formation of nanoparticle in a biological manner, a biological way, basically a green synthesis for preparation of nanoparticles. Particle, but in other approaches we use uh, chemicals and other things. The capping agents are there. The chemicals uh, and other reducing agents are, or uh, they are itself chemicals. So, uh, from your point of view, uh, which technology will be much better for preparation of nanoparticle, uh, and uh, which will be more convenient uh, for further few periods, for further few years ahead. Yeah, I think that the technology I showed you of the Apsar Ahmed, for example, you know, that's very convenient. Uh, there is no any very high high fi technology being used, the biological material, the room temperature, there is no heating involved, there is no sophistication involved. So I think what you said, you know, the biological part will be further important. But initially, you know, as you yeah. might have heard recently, we start from the chemicals first, then we switch on to the safer of things, you know. So I think in uh, initially in the beginning, we can have nanomedicine, nanoparticle produced by the chemical. Then in future, we, if we can produce the biological material, I think they'll be more safer. They'll be less toxic. They'll be more effective. And uh, uh, there is one, one thing I want to express also, share with you also, that uh, there is a, one question mark also about of the nanomedicines. If they are so small, they can go to any part of the body. So scientists are also studying another very important branch of nanotoxicology that yes. apart from doing something good for the body, can they do something bad also? That's also an important area because a lot of nano cosmetics have come up and then uh, you, when you are using them, you know, you, you have to be very sure that they don't do toxic things to your body. Definitely. So I think for medicines also, we have to be, I think it's a future uh, area and uh, it's a very good emerging area. A lot has to be done. The beginning is very good. The response is very good. And whatever the shortcomings, I'm sure in future, with the help of the biologists, with the help of the chemists, with the help of all the engineers, you know, the biotech engineers, we'll be able to solve the issues, you know, one day and make this nanotechnology very effective, very safe, and less, or you can say, non toxic for all of us. Jay, Jay. Sir, uh, in connection to that uh, particular example of Fusarium oxysporum, uh, which uh, he used for preparation of gold nanoparticles or silver nanoparticles. Uh, I just want to clear that uh, actually the fusarium, uh, fusarium is a soil-borne pathogen. Yes, yes. Soil-borne pathogen and definitely it is also secreting some uh, molecules which, is, uh, which are toxic and uh, they are not fruitful for uh, uh, some purposes. So uh, uh, using uh, such an organism might be a kind of uh, uh, 
difficulty for other in the future ahead for generating some nanoparticle of formulations no no, no. I, I i want to show another example you know what he did you know he belongs to lucknow only yes. his birth place is lucknow so uh, he when he came next time to lucknow he took sand from the river gomti lucknow and when he uh, exactly you know what uh, i never knew which just show you shared with me so what he did he put this sand of gomti river with this fungus and yeah. can you believe he, he told me that even the nano particle of that gomti sand were also created by this fungus and okay. i think if any toxic part is there definitely i agree with you it has to be separated the the thing you know the nano particle which you are going to use they must be safe for you must and i think safe, that's yeah. how the expertise is involved but the yes, preparation sir. is very simple that was my point you know at yes, the room yeah. temperature only yes sir yes sir i got it so second question is uh, there are different biomolecules like cocumin uh, you have stated the yes. example uh, and it is a very uh, well uh, molecule uh, present in haldi cocuma longa i am also working on this cocuma cocumin for uh, some period uh, for uh, some uh, purposes developing the nanoparticle of for fusion of cocumin so uh, actually it is having some shelf life yes so uh, my question is how we can control and maintain their shelf life actually if you remember there are, are uh, some... uh, yes 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 i think i worked for 20 years on curcumin in cdr yeah. right and uh, from turmeric also we made a drug for brain stroke but that doesn't contain curcumin i want uh, i must share with you so but curcumin part i want to tell you there are two more curcuminoids there in yes yes turmeric yeah. And uh, they are structurally very, very close to each other. You know, hydroxy is missing, methoxy yeah. is missing. So we found, you know, actually it was very interesting study in CDRI. Uh, initially, the curcumin we separated from the plant was very effective. And when I was given the job, I was working in a team with the scientists, you know. And that time I was very young and I remember long, long back. So when we synthesized curcumin in the lab, it was exactly trans trans isomer of the curcumin, exactly what we want for the efficacy. But we were surprised to find out the activity was gone. Then the yeah. question was there, where is the activity now? If curcumin is effective and we have pure curcumin, which is fully certified by NMR, IR, mass spectroscopy, how can we say it is not effective? Then it was a challenge for me and blame was on me. How did you make a molecule which is not effective, that means it is not curcumin. So I said, yeah. no, it is curcumin. Then the question was that what to do now? So I went to the concerned scientist who was doing the biological testing part of that. Okay. And then when I got that sample, I was surprised, you know, it was not one compound. It was having three compounds. Yes, yes, yes. And it was curcumin, it was two more curcuminides. And then can you believe we standardized a portion? We thought if three are effective, why not to make three? So can you believe we developed a method by which we can synthetically make in the same ratio as the plant has got these three curcuminides. And when we uh, tested on several other things, especially for UVITs, you know, disease of eyes, we did the human trials on some of the patients in King George Medical Colleges in Lucknow with the expert of our medical experts, you know, the medical doctors. Yeah. It was very effective. So I think here uh, in plants also, when you take, remember, it's not true with curcumin, it's true with many, it is called synergistic action. One plus one, it is equal to not two, but it is 11. So I yes. think we do a mistake uh, many times when we isolate drug from the plant or medicine from the plant, you know, uh, we purify it and then we found activity is gone. The only yeah. activity because of that is synergistic action. There are compounds which may be in traces, but they are playing a very crucial role in giving overall efficacy and activity. I think this you have to follow always. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, so third query is, sir, it is uh, believed that uh, in uh, preparation of nanoparticle, we have to maintain the uh, size of, we have to maintain the optimum size of the nanoparticle. And we can also control the size also. Yes. And the property also uh, depends upon the kind of size as well. Yes. Sir. So uh, I, my question is just uh, how, uh, how the uh, size can be maintained, how we can maintain the size and how uh, it is much effective for uh, any biological activity or any functioning. 
I have never actually made. I told you I never did any work on nanotechnology, but there are techniques available. I know where you can control the size and size is actually a very simple question is why nano is very important. The all game depends on the size only. You know the surface area, the size. Yes. The when you decrease or increase the size, the surface area increases or decreases. Because okay. of that, the effectivity, the whole nano things, you know, there. So yeah. techniques are available. I I have no idea exactly, frankly speaking, okay. how they okay. control it. But there are techniques you can tailor made a nano particle the way you uh, desire, you know, and you can okay. control the size the way you want because you certainly you need a particular size for a particular efficacy and effectivity. Yeah, yeah. it's another part of research actually. <laughs> yeah. Sir, uh, my next question is: uh, Using nanotechnology in agriculture and in health sector, uh, we are using different metallic ions uh, for preparation of different nano formulations uh, for agriculture as well and uh, for uh, medical sector as well. Okay, uh, so uh, my question is: uh, Some metallic ions are very much sensitive towards uh, the environmental conditions. If I am talking about agriculture point of view. And that uh, the soil parameters as well, uh, they they might also uh, affect uh, those nanoparticles if it is uh, the nano agriculture formulation, uh, or suppose if it is a nano foliar uh, uh, formulation, uh, some environmental environmental factors may also affect it. Some metallic ions are there which uh, can be uh, which, which can lose their activity under these conditions. And if suppose if I am talking about the medical sector. Uh, uh, they are entering into the body system. They are also influenced by some pH and uh, other factors. So, uh, how we can uh, control all these uh, surrounding and external factors on this particular functioning of uh, these nano formulations for both agriculture? Yeah, that's why. That's why you know you have to carry out a very detailed study. Uh, if it is happening, what is the perfect reason for that? And then, what are the conditions that you have to observe? You have to develop. And as you said, in the agricultural science. in uh, pesticides they are making nano formulations you know for fertilizers also they are making nano formulations so exactly you know many things you when you plan in the lab they may not be really effective in the field so for that you have to study even in the medical science also if there are factors you know which are affecting by ph or body temperature or certain other chemicals in the body or some so i think everything has to be studied in detail and then you can rectify those things and those changes you know as per your need i think that's what i feel okay okay sir sir there are two more questions uh, and second last question is uh, sir uh, is there uh, any effect of the specific size uh, uh, on the activity of nano particle suppose if i have actually the entire entire nano science is based on the size only huh. you know the it's game of surface area only that is the yes, reason yeah. that makes it unique you know so yeah. i think The surface area, the size plays a very important role. Uh, uh, sir, I am talking about the shape actually. Uh, suppose if a particle is nano prism, uh -huh. and if anyhow we can prepare the that particular uh, particle as nano sphere. So is uh, uh, are the activities will differ? Uh, suppose if any if any biological activity. Yeah. Goes. Yes. 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 I mean, activity may differ. Yes. Yes. For example, you know, you might have seen the crystals also. You know, they are different size and shape. their yeah. activity as a medicine also differs you know sometimes so i think okay. i think so okay sir and one uh, last question sir uh, sir uh, what is graph graphene and uh, uh, any significance of it nowadays graphene actually basically it is a carbon material you know like nano particle you can say they mostly graphene and they are used mostly in the material science you know and uh, i have not uh, made any lecture on graphene so i have no idea but it is equally very very important area scientists are working yes, now yes, yes yes yeah thank you so much sir thank you so much uh, thank you so much for uh, giving you. me a lot of information i learned thank a lot from you. your questions thank you sir thank you uh, over to swati ma'am and uh, i i dr mathur i must add you that uh, next time when i deliver my talk anywhere i think i must add three four scientists on graphene this is something i missed you know thank you so much for reminding me <laughs> i promise you and certainly i'll add three four scientists especially at least people should know in detail not in detail if for basic things they must know because it is very very important nowadays yes sir know? yes sir especially sir. in the material science you know they are making graphene a uh, lot yes, of compounds yes, they are making yes and sir, especially yes, for example nano uh, carbon tubes also now in future they are going to 
uh, i want to share one experience with you you might have traveled by dreamliner aircraft you know of air india dreamliner is made by boeing company and it okay. uh, normally runs from delhi to kolkata and international sector also so can you believe the uh, the compound which is used in making the body of this aircraft dream airliner which is about 300 seater uh, it is very strong material and they have used nanotechnology in this and okay. can you believe there are no sh- window shutters in dreamliner when you travel i if you might have traveled you might have observed there are no window shutters in dreamliner aircraft if you want darkness there is a button there you put it it be, the entire glass will become blue okay. that means it will be dark and if you put another button it becomes transparent and sometimes the pilot done for entire aircraft you know all the uh, he thinks you know suppose there is a uh, time you know is uh, like 2 o'clock in the summer time you know it's very hot so the pilot will put one button and then tar all the glass window there are no shutters you cannot put it down or up no so what he does he put that blue in color so that is also a nanotechnology but 20% body of the na- dream airliner craft is more lighter and it is more what strong you can see because of the composite nano material they have used starting from nanotechnology and i think uh, graphene is such material which will be used especially in designing such aircraft especially the fighter aircraft and spying aircrafts thank you so much sir i learned a lot from you uh, i am also working on different nano particles and different aspects of nano technology and one one thing i i, I think i must add before i close sorry uh, recently the uh, some british expert have designed a tank also you know uh and the camouflage camouflage you must have camouflage. seen how chameleon changes the color yes, as for yes. the surrounding uh, so they learned at the nano scale you know how it is being done by the chameleon yes yes and the yes. same thing they applied you know on the tank so tank when passes through area the color is color. actually taking from that mass uh, surrounding so you see something is going but exactly you cannot find out what it is going so yes, i think yes. some of the very latest area in defense how they are using and in future they may design perfectly a camouflage tank which can pass and you cannot see it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely some nanotechnology has a bright future and uh, we all are uh, witnessing the different aspects of nanotechnology thanks a lot sir for the le- uh, great lecture and uh, wonderful uh, answers <laughs> over to so fatima yeah thank you so much sir i'm glad you reserved a few minutes to feel the questions sir your answers were very insightful i really appreciate the assiduity and patience with which the questions were being dealt thank you to all our viewers to have stayed over so patiently and to have enthusiastically participated in this session today we are gratified by your presence today thank you so much thank you so much so swati for giving me thank the honor sir. the privilege thank to you, talk sir. to the learned audience and uh the discussion with dr mathur was really pleasant for me i learned thank a lot you. and i think uh, my best wishes to each one of you and thank keep you so doing the good, good work certainly i salute all the indian scientists today because today is the day india has created a history mass vaccination has started for the covid 19 to all the medical experts in the country a great day hats off to the indian scientists indian pharmacists indian experts and indian doctors Indeed sir thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much sir.